Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today, we're turning this into this. Let's get started. So I start off all my drawings the same way. I've got just a basic lead pencil, a pencil sharpener, a pink eraser, and then a mechanical pencil for those little details. So I'm gonna spend probably five to 10 minutes on the sketch, probably closer to 10 minutes. Um, this is actually one of the fastest drawings I've done just beginning to end, so it's normally I would take days, sometimes even weeks if I compromise on some of this stuff, so yeah. Anyway, so I'm just getting the basic form and shape down, getting the proportions right, and as you can see, sometimes I'll just draw something and then I'll completely erase it, start over. That's the process. You never get, uh, you're never perfect at it. I've been doing this for years and yet never fully master it, but that's okay. Just kind of learn to enjoy the process and I'm saying that to myself as to anyone else. You can look at this as more therapeutic than actual work. I think that's kind of that's the way you're supposed to look at it. So there, I'm already getting the mechanical pencil, kind of sharpening some of these details up. I was pretty happy with the, uh, the overall form and proportions, and I might still trim some of this. I had to completely reshape his head. His, his head just, uh, it was completely, it's very, very round. And mockingbirds have very flat heads, so I had to redo that part. I'm just bringing in the wing details, and I'm still... Still drawing some basic shapes with my large pencil. This is not a special pencil, by the way. This is just a standard lead pencil. I think it might be Derwent or something like that, but it was given to me a very long time ago. It's kind of been my pencil of choice, and as you can see, I've sharpened it quite a few times. It's probably got another six months, a year left in it before I got to get a new one because it's, <laughs> it's down to like the last three inches. So I'm sharpening this up. There I am, flattening the head. Sharpening the beak up. Like I said, I think this took me about... I think it actually took me longer. I think it might have taken me 20 to 30 minutes just because I was being a perfectionist about it, but... Oftentimes when I do these drawings, I mean it's between work and life and everything else I do, so I might start the drawing over the course of a week, every night work on it for a few minutes, put it aside, and then I'll pull it out, and then I'll do the same thing with the paint. I'll paint it for a little while, and then I'll put it aside. I didn't actually think it was possible to to paint in a, to paint a bird in a, a reasonable time frame until one night I was making a... I think it was a Valentine's gift for my wife. And I went ahead and marathoned it in one night. Alright, so jumping into the paint now. So the thing with the paint is you don't want to layer it on too heavy. You don't want to jump in and just put it everywhere. That'll look really flat. The best thing you can do is try and add dimension to it. So I really like to go on with the shadows first. So I underline the wings, the head, the chin, uh, the belly right there. Just kind of get some of these details put in. And as you'll see, I wasn't fully happy with the details up front, so I kind of play with it as you go along. Think about watercolors, it's a lot more forgiving than people think. If you don't like something now, it's not set in stone. As long as it's still wet, you can still... You can grab a paper towel, you can sop some of it up, you can put water on it and kind of blur it a little bit. So I'm trying to get some of these little feathers right here. The trick with the feathers is you don't have to show the texture of each and every one. Just gotta put little little ruffled patches to kind of remind the viewer that it's got uh, got some texture to it. If you start with the dark patches, you can kind of apply water to it, and that water can kind of blend, and that can cover the whole painting, and that can kind of help with some of the shadows. You don't want to be too hard with your uh, your dark areas. 
been told that I, I don't actually use watercolors in the traditional sense. I kind of treat them more like oils, but you know what? I'm fine with that. Gets the job done. I'm happy with the result. And the tools that get the job done are the tools for the job. And there I am kind of fixing that wing there. First time I put it down, it just, it wasn't going the way I wanted it to, but that's the thing about watercolor, you just work with it, you keep going, eventually you can, you can kind of harness it. It does kind of have a mind of its own, but it's, it's really not that difficult. I've not dealt with some much more difficult mediums, but you just kind of keep going with it, keep an open mind. Enjoy the journey. You can have fun with it. Put more shadows on the feet there. The feet are one of the hardest parts for me to paint because I think they're so small and precise. The rest of the bird's a little more forgiving, but if you can start outlining it, and then you can get your brush, and you can just kind of blend those harsh lines you get and kind of give it a little more color, a little more shadow key to any good painting is you've got to master shadow and you've got to master light. If you can start out with shadow, you already have a halfway decent painting. A painting that is just light and shadow, it gives it its form, it gives it its depth. And without harsh lines, you can, you can still have a, a decent illustration. So master that, and you've already come a very long way. <clears throat> so I like these little spiky feathers on a bird. I think it gives it character. Kind of reminds you that the gives it a little texture. The way I like to do that is uh, I, I probably abuse my brushes, but I like to get them kind of fray the ends by you know, hitting on the hitting it on the palm of my hand. Got to be careful with that because it splashes paint a little bit, but it, it gives this, this little impression of, of hairs or feathers or something like that, and it's really fun. Now I'm going in with a little more of these dark details. The only thing I'm using here is black. I actually ran out of my tube of black here, so I had some dry crumbled bits of black that I just breathed new life into by putting water into it. Now I'm getting some uh, yellow ochre. The uh, reference photo had a little bit of a yellow tint to it, so I was just kind of putting that on there. Not a whole lot, just applying a bit bit to the beak, the head, the feathers, and then getting that paper towel kind of lifting it a little bit so it's not so harsh. If you're quick, you can lift the colors on a watercolor. If you add a little too much paint, maybe you're not happy with it, put water on it, you dab it with a, a damp rag, paper towel, and you can essentially lift the color and kind of start over. Like I said, much more forgiving. Now I'm adding yellow ochre around the eyes, trying to get those little dark outlines. Somebody in the background is trying to stealthily close the door. Those eyes are one of the keys to really making the bird come alive and have personality. This one had these really striking amber eyes. So kind of putting that yellow ochre in there, and then I think a little dash of maybe kind of a red color to give it this glow, and then those big black pupils, and then putting that shine in there. That shine is so important. Once again, just light and shadow. If you can master light and shadow, your paintings will just come alive. Adding some sharp little details under the beak there. The thing about birds is they seem to have all their feathers pointing in the same basic direction. So you just kind of ruffle them up, you give them little uh, like half circles of feathers. Just kind of reminds the person that they are made of feathers. I, I couldn't get that, uh, that tail very sharp there. I kept putting paint down and it would come out in these jagged little lines. I wasn't happy with that. What you're seeing here is like a 
two hour video condensed. Next time I'll try and show my paint and show you what I'm doing. Have more of a full picture of it. And a little bit of white there now. The white really makes it pop, gives it kind of some light. Now adding light is kind of difficult. The easiest thing to do is to just avoid painting that area. You add white, it gives it kind of a blue tint, but it still looks pretty darn good. Finishing up some details there. And this bird is about done. You watch my work process condensed into about 11 minutes. It would normally take me hours. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, please like and subscribe for more. And I will be back with more tutorials, videos, demos. We'll have a lot of fun. Thanks a lot. Have a great one.